In the diagram, two points on the circle are separated by the angle theta. This angle can be measured in either degrees or radians. The angle in radians, subtended at the center by the two points, is defined as the distance around the circle separating the points divided by the radius of the circle. One radian is therefore the angle subtended at the center of a circle by an arc of length equal to the radius of the circle. A complete circle is 2 pi radians. One radian is therefore about 57 degrees. In the diagram, a particle moves from point A to point B around the circumference of the circle. The angle through which the particle moves is theta radians. The rate at which the particle moves is known as the angular speed of the particle and is given the symbol omega. If the direction of the particle is also stated, then we are describing the angular velocity of the particle. By convention, anticlockwise rotations are regarded as positive and clockwise rotations as negative. If the particle moves with a constant speed around the circle, it will cover equal arcs in equal times. The angular velocity of the particle is constant. The acceleration, a, of a body moving in a circle of radius r with a constant speed v is equal to v squared divided by r. This can be derived by consideration of the change in instantaneous linear velocity of the body in a small time interval. The vectors VA and VB represent the velocity at points A and B. The change in velocity from A to B is final velocity minus initial velocity is equal to VB minus VA. The force F required to maintain the circular motion is found by using Newton's second law of motion. This force is in the same direction as the acceleration it produces and acts towards the center of the circle. We can also represent the force in terms of the angular velocity of the body. It is common for more than one force to act on a body simultaneously. When this occurs, the forces are said to be concurrent if they act at the same point, and coplanar if they lie within the same plane. Forces are vector quantities and can therefore be added by the triangle rule.
any single force can be split into two components. This is, in fact, the reverse of combining two forces into a resultant force. In this case, the single force is resolved into two other forces. It is often extremely useful to resolve a single force into two forces in order to produce components which are perpendicular to each other. In this example, the force is resolved into the two perpendicular forces, F times cosine theta and F times sine theta. When multiple forces act at a point, it is necessary to resolve each of the separate forces into a particular direction and then find the sum of all the resolved components in that direction. To find the resultant of the above four forces, we need to resolve each force into the same two directions and sum for each direction. We can then find the resultant of the two concurrent forces. Resolving in the direction OX, total force equals 4 plus 6 cos 30 degrees minus 5 cos 70 degrees, which equals 7.486 newtons. Note that the 2 newton force is perpendicular to OX and therefore has no component in the OX direction. Resolving in the direction OY, Total force equals 2 minus 6 cos 60 degrees minus 5 cos 20 degrees, which equals minus 5.7 newtons. Note, the result is negative, indicating that it is in the downward direction. The 4 newton force has no component in the OY direction. Once all four forces have been resolved into two perpendicular components, the resultant force and direction can be determined. It is possible for several forces to act on a particle or rigid body simultaneously. This can result in a series of calculations of resolved forces to find any overall resultant force. In examples where three forces act on a particle or body, the analysis is simpler. These three-force problems have special features which make them easier to solve. If a body is acted on by three coplanar forces and is in equilibrium, then one of two situations exists. Either the body can be acted on by concurrent forces, or the body may be in equilibrium as a result of parallel forces acting. If a body is in equilibrium under a set of three coplanar concurrent forces, the resultant force on the body must be zero. Because force is a vector quantity, the three forces acting can be represented by vectors of suitable length and direction. Here is a force diagram for a body in equilibrium under the action of three coplanar concurrent forces A, B and C. As the body is in equilibrium, the vector sum of these forces must be zero, so they can be drawn as a triangle of forces using vectors of the appropriate size and direction. Each side of the triangle represents one of the force vectors.
The triangle of forces is used to analyze three-force problems where all of the vector magnitudes are known or can be determined easily. In situations where the angles between the forces are known, it may be easier to use Lamy's theorem, which is an adaptation of the sine rule, and states that if three concurrent forces are in equilibrium, each force is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces. The triangle of forces is used to analyze three-force problems where all of the vector magnitudes are known or can be determined easily. In situations where the angles between the forces are known, it may be easier to use Lamy's theorem, which is an adaptation of the sine rule, and states that if three concurrent forces are in equilibrium, each force is proportional to the sine of the angle between the other two forces.